Hey, good morning. So <laughs> the lighting is off on my camera because I just got back from Mexico. So we're just going to pretend that I'm hungover, even though I'm not, because it goes right along with the theme of this video, which is bear. So stay tuned. We're getting started right now. So welcome back, y'all. I'm Debbie Dobbins. I'm your host for this episode of your Wichita Falls. We're going to talk about beer today. And if you don't know anything about this channel, it's all about Wichita Falls from soup to nuts, real estate, lifestyle, and everything in between. And I'm usually your host. So, but you know, today I want to talk about some more history of Wichita Falls because we have so much of it. And one of the most amazing things about Wichita Falls is that we are the the germination, if you will, the start, the inventor of certain things. And so for those of you that love beer, you'll love this story. I personally am not a beer drinker. So when I'm going to share this story with you, it, I haven't actually experienced it. However, I know all about it. I actually just drank some beer in Mexico recently because I don't drink beer. And I found out that I really like Bohemian. So for those of you that are bohemian beer drinkers out there, high five, um, put a chat in the comments, something to say that you like bohemian. I, I'm sure there's great beers out there. I'm more of a wine drinker. And you may have thought that beer is amazing. A lot of people love, love, love beer. And if you love savory drinks, so maybe I really need to try this concoction because I love savory drinks. I love any kind of drink. When I drink my beer, I put salt in it. Now, I know that some of you out there do that, but I put salt, more salt, lime, anything to make it more savory. So with beer, if you love savory drinks, you may already be acquainted with a type of beer concoction. Some people have called it red beer or red eye or beer mixed with tomato juice, which is really boring, or micheladas, which, um, you know, interestingly enough, I spend a lot of time in Mexico. Um, it's a Mexican cocktail with beer and tomato juice, but it has some seasonings like chili powder. So it's not only savory, it's a little on the hot side. So if you like hot, you probably like a michelada. But I digress. Here's the thing. Have you heard because if you're in Wichita Falls, you spend any time in Wichita Falls, you've already heard of the red draw. So the red draw is something, once again, unique to Wichita Falls. And it has put Wichita Falls on the map, the map of the media, which is, you know, I find it so fascinating that we, this Wichita Falls, this little community has hit the press so many times. But if you're not from here, or you're not from Texas, or the Oklahoma border, then you may not have heard of the Red Draw. So I'm going to tell you about the Red Draw. The Red Draw is another one of our creations here in Wichita Falls. And it is just basically tomato juice and beer. But it is so well made. I'm going to give you the recipe here in a second when we talk about how you make it to make it so that it's really extraordinary. But you can order this beverage now in a lot of places um, outside of Wichita Falls. One of the first places to talk about the Red Draw was Texas Monthly's The Texanist column. There was a column by a gentleman named David Courtney in the Texas Monthly where he took a deep dive on the subject of Red Draws. No pun intended. If you are hungover, you know, hair of the dog, take a deep dive. One such spot, though, he talked about, and this is interesting because there's a little um, mystery around, just like everything else in Wichita Falls in our history. There's a place here called P2, or the Deuce, as we call it locally, and it dates back to 1948. And P2 even flaunts the tagline that they're the home of the Red Draw. So if you go by their, their place, you will see that. And P2 is a institution around here. So here's the thing. They serve it with 12 ounces of Budweiser draft beer and four ounces of Campbell's tomato soup in a frosty mug. One of the things about the origination of Red Draw, and I'll talk about a little bit more in a second, is that mug. Because you can't just put this in a glass. It's just not the same. But they have a similar composition in other places 
and but none are really quite the same as the p2 red drop now personally if i was going to make it and as i said i've not tasted the elixir um i would make it with bloody mary mix because then it's super spicy and it's got some mm, body to it my own personal opinion is about tomato juice it's just a little wimpy but a lot of you don't want that extra spice regardless they make it with budweiser and campbell's tomato juice but nothing is quite as famous as the p2 or the deuces red draw here in wichita falls even though they all started with this red draw moniker in so many other parts of texas and they may call them other things but be aware that the red draw was started in wichita falls and some people say on the border of oklahoma but you know literally we claim that as ours anyways so unlike at other parts of the country and even in texas they have done polls of joints outside of wichita falls but inside of texas so what this gentleman in his column did right i will say that there's been a lot of watering holes outside of wichita falls that take have taken on basically the red draw and that some of them really have come very close and you wouldn't be very disappointed if you stumbled into a number of them some of them are outside of wichita falls proper because uh, p2 is not the only one but there's a place called the rock and s bar grill in graham um which is like an hour from here um there's docks bar and grill in munster which is really off the track and an hour to the southeast of wichita falls is the vernon sports bar and grill so all of these are farther away from wichita falls than just getting a red draw in wichita falls but the fact is is that there is the feedlot restaurant and red dirt saloon in burke which is just 20 minutes so there's there's a lot of watering holes if you will that serve the red, red draw but here's the thing is that it originated here in wichita falls inarguably wichita falls created the red draw and if you ask anybody familiar with the red draws from Wichita Falls or otherwise, they're going to tell you this same story. Because the Museum of North Texas History, they show an article that explains the precise origins of the red draw. And some of them tell a story of a 1950s invention at the Bar L Drive-In on 13th Street. So I know that P2 shows that they are the home of the red draw they may be the home of it but the history says that it was created at the bar l drive-in which is still you can see the building there um courtney wrote in his article as i was sharing a little bit about that some people say that the potion was formulated at the old rock inn on old iowa park road which is still which top falls so there is a little mm, rivalry about where it originated few people that say that the drink showed up in the 1960s instead of the 50s thanks to the presence of these hungover german pilots because remember we have a nato base here who were stationed at shepherd because of the nato base so there is a little bit of conflicting um history of course why wouldn't that be normal for wichita falls but according to local lore that's what I go by. The drink called the Red Draw originated in Wichita Falls in the 50s when the Bar L Drive-In came to be. So I'm going with that one. But so for you, if you really wanted to make this at home, the first step into creating this amazingly popular concoction, as I said, it's very popular here, get some heavy stemmed goblets. So even if you're using a um, stein, you want to make sure that you put them in the deep freeze until they are thoroughly frosted over. That's one of the keys to making a good red draw. You add about an inch of cold tomato juice in the bottom. So, or you can use the recipe that P2 uses, which is the four ounces of tomato juice and the eight ounces of the beer, if you want to measure, measure. But if you put, you know, this little bit in the bottom with the tomato juice and then fill the goblet or the stein with draft recommended budweiser personally i think you can use any beer but i don't want to get in trouble for modifying the recipe but then you have what you call the red draw you know the interesting thing is in the 50s when it was basically invented if you will um, beers differed in that they weren't as pasteurized as they are today and there's a great story on the history of beer and pasteurization and how bud did all of that but in any event, 
Um, it had a little more of a yeasty taste because it didn't have pasteurization. And the combination of the container that it was in, the goblet or the stein, and the ingredients would cause a film of ice to float on top of the brew. So I really would have liked to have seen or had or experienced a red draw without pasteurized beer, but that's another day. There is another legend though that has the red draw originating at the Rock Inn, the one I shared about that's um, on Old Iowa Park Road. And it is said that in the 50s, it was a thriving spot, which if you go down Iowa Park Road, you see that there was a lot of activity um, that unfortunately is, looks like it's, some of it's abandoned at this point. But this alternative legend goes, the Rock Inn gave birth to the Red Draw. And so who can say for sure? Because honestly, I was a little glimmer in the eyes of my parents in the 1950s. But Wichita Falls is generally acknowledged as the birthplace of the drink, no doubt. And P2 says that they're the home of it, so there's that. No one can really lay claim to its origin because of all of the rumors, but everybody agrees that it originated here. There's no question about that. And if you ask a local, we are very, very proud of our red draw. So you might go to Louisiana and call it gets called red beer, blood beer, or parts of Missouri, and they call it red beer, blood beer, any of those places. Um, and as I said, some people use different ingredients, Clamato juice, which is the Bloody Mary mixes, or Clamato juice, I think that's clams. But you know, the thing is, is that it's one of those drinks, you can make it, if you make it at home, you can make it your way. If you go out to B2, it's gonna be made the way I shared earlier in the video. But the end of the conversation really is that the Red Draw is another one of those things that's a homegrown experience here in Wichita Falls. And I love sharing about the history of Wichita Falls because we have so much history. And if you love learning about Wichita Falls, please peruse our channel, subscribe. There's two more videos coming up. If you wanna know more about Wichita Falls, um, what it's like to live here, if you need to move here, there's a link in the first comments below that you can schedule a Zoom meeting with me. And as I say all of the time, y'all come back now. You hear? Bye-bye.